morning. My name is Michael Thunder. I'm the proprietor of the White Dragon Tea Room. Coming to you from the tea room this morning. And the, the, uh, the name of our talk this morning, the inspiration for it was, and this will be backwards so I'm going to read it to you, is the trouble with tea balls. The second part of it says proper steeping methods for loose leaf tea. So the trouble with tea balls. You may not have known that there was trouble with tea balls, but there is. So, anyway, I've set up this morning. There's a couple tea balls. We'll get to those in a minute. All right. So, I've set up this morning with some of the things that I like to use when I'm making tea in a relaxed manner, and we certainly have them in the tea room. I'll start with flowers. These are lilies, calla lilies from California. Actually. And a light incense. This incense is called green tea incense. Comes like this. We carry it in the tea room. We frequently will light that to bring the pleasure of that. I'm going to uncover the kung fu table right now. It uh, is covered by a furudoshi, which is a Japanese cloth. And this particular one has carps on it. The carp go up the waterfalls. You can see that major carp doing, and they become the dragon. We cover the tea table at night to indicate that the tea room is closed and we take it off in the morning to indicate that we're ready for business again. So, what is the problem with tea balls? Why do I say there's a problem with tea balls? So I want to give you a little demonstration that will lead to a deeper understanding of that. Now this is a tea bag. You probably have all seen tea bags. We were all raised with tea bags. Uh, pretty much the way that we made tea originally was with the tea bag. The certain characteristics of the tea bag that require that the tea be chopped and made fine so it's more accessible to the water when the water is put on the leaf. So already you've got a, a leaf that has been pretty well mutilated in order to get it into a bag and to make it accessible. The second thing about tea bags, we just don't know how old they are. Now this one is a German tea bag. Someone actually gave it to me. But I want to show you the difference between the contents of a tea bag and let's say I'm just randomly picking um, Thunderclap, which is a black tea that we sell here in the uh, tea room. Happens to be the same as my last name. Don't know how that happened. So, if you look at these two, this is a, a loose leaf tea called Thunderclap. It's a black tea. It's from China. Actually, it's from Nepal. That particular one. And then we've got a chopped tea from Germany. It's a German tea bag. So which one would you prefer to drink? So a lot of what we're doing these days is introducing people to this as opposed to this. So what has this got to do with the tea balls? Well here's two different sizes of tea balls, right? So that would be for a pot, that would probably be for your cup, and there's one size smaller than this for that. So this is like a little cage. You see there isn't a whole lot of room for a leaf to open up. So you could take a chopped leaf like this and it would be fine in a tea ball. And you could take this and put it in a tea ball. But really what this tea is saying is 
You know, don't fit me in. Let me be in a pot. Don't put me in a tiny little t-bowl because I can't give you my full gifts. So I can translate them. Basically what this tea leaf is saying is that he can't give his free gifts and his full gifts to us as the uh, drinkers unless he's able to spread out. So it's sort of like confining somebody in a corset. So um, these are great. I sell a lot of these to college students and to people that are on the road. It's a terrific way to take loose leaf tea and make a cup of tea, which is better than that or the tea you get, you might get in a, a restaurant that doesn't specialize in tea. So they have their purpose. They're nicely designed. They've been around forever. However, I think what we're experimenting with here, I know what we're experimenting with here, is another way of producing tea and uh, enjoying it. And it's sort of like a really beautiful, bashful woman. If you are brash or aggressive with a bashful woman, she'll retreat into her bashfulness or her uh, introversion. Whereas if you're gentle and coaxing and appropriate, you will be able to have a better conversation with her. So we're going to be experimenting with loose leaf tea today and all the different methods to brew it. Uh, all of these methods are available in the tea shop. We're at tea Durang, Durang, <laughs> whitedragontea.com. <laughs> uh, we've been through a few iterations. And uh, that will be posted later if you need to look it up. And I'm going to start out on our Kung Fu table. It's a Chinese table design. I have it made here in the United States. I design it. It has a hole in it, and underneath the hole is a, a big uh, Chinese vessel that collects all the mess I make on the table. I'm going to move the tea balls now. I think that's enough of that. Okay, so um, we are at, start with a white tea, I think. We are at, um, I think, about 7,000 feet here in Durango, 6,900 feet, and water boils at 198 degrees. Um, at sea level, it boils at 212 degrees. All you have to do is subtract a one degree for each 500 feet above sea level to get the, the point at which water boils. It's very important because we're going to be doing different teas today. So I think I'm going to use the Kung Fu and start with, uh, we'll do a white. This is a little Yixing clay pot from China. What's going on in China right now is all the prices are going up. It's getting harder to get. They used to be really affordable. Um, but the Chinese are becoming uh, more and more wealthy and they're keeping more and more of the tea products and the tea in their, uh, their own country. So this is called white peony. It's a very popular tea. It has peony leaves in it. You can see it's a very large leaf. Actually, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to do a bigger pot for that. I'm going to use one of these. I think that peony is too big a leaf to put in that little one. We'll do something else in there. Maybe we'll do the green in there. So this is a strainer. We don't usually use it. Remember how that tea leaf was complaining about being confined? Well, it's still confined in here, which is in some ways a, an enlargement on the tea ball, but it's still the same problem. So I'm putting in uh, a few pinches. Probably that's about two forefinger pinches. And the pinch is determined by that's a forefinger pinch and that's a three-finger pinch. And um, ultimately, I prefer that all my customers become their own authority on how they make their tea at home by experimenting. Okay, this is boiling. It just boiled, so it's at 198, and that's too hot. This should be about 180. So I'm going to just take, this is a Japanese tea cup. It's a sencha cup, really. I'm going to pour the water into the cup at 198. Let's sit for just a moment. But this uh, porcelain, it's a cold morning here in Durango, and this porcelain is actually absorbing the heat from the water. It's dropped down about 10 degrees now. I'll go down there to 5. Bryant, my associate here on the other side of the camera, is going to have to drink a lot of tea this morning. Maybe I'll help him. Yes. So, you just put, so basically, making tea is nothing more than putting water with leaves. Like they say, the first tea the emperor was, I guess, in his garden and he was boiling up some water. Why? I don't know. And a leaf fell in and tea was born. And that's how it's supposed to have happened. So it basically is elemental. It's just the tea leaves and hot water. Everything after that is how long you do it, how hot you do it, uh, what kind of a vessel you use. This vessel is nice size. See how those leaves can really move around in there and open up? Um, they're, they're expressing themselves. They're 
much more so than they would if they were in a T-ball. If you're going to use a T-ball, I would suggest like black teas or something like that. They're pretty strong anyway. The more delicate teas are not going to give you their full show if you do that. Now, if I want, if I'm afraid, and I'm not really in this sense, but if I'm afraid that those little leaves are going to get in there and people have to pick leaves out of their teeth, I will strain it through here. Okay, this is a Sencha cup from Japan. We're going to talk cups in a little bit. It's a really great design. And there is our first cup of tea, right? You want that? Okay, that's white peony. All these teas, as, as are all the equipments, uh, are available in the tea room. Now I'm going to show you how the Kung Fu works by going to a green tea. This is not uh, finished inside. We use a good green tea. Uh, that's uh, one of our favorites here in the tea room. It's very well priced at seven fifty for two ounces. And this little pot um, comes to easing China. It's unfinished on the inside. So we don't recommend that like you do a highly uh, scented tea like a, like a mango swirl in the same pot because the mango will stay in here and it will influence all the tea. So usually with these pots, you use them for just green or just do long. Uh, I, I changed my mind on the white because that white leaf is going to be too big for this, I think. I can do it, but not so good. This is a green tea. It's a beautiful. Um, see if you can see it there at all. It's a beautiful green tea leaf. And the thing that's crazy about this tea, because it is one of our, our basic go-to teas, this is from Darjeeling, northern India. Darjeeling is at the foot of the Himalayas. And uh, the tea bears a lot of that wonderful energy coming down from the mountains to the big rivers. So I used about a three-finger pinch in there. And again, I'm not going to go very long on this. Um, simply because tea comes up much faster in this particular method. Remember, it's a Kung Fu. It's got a hole. There's a pot to catch the water. So first of all, I'm going to chill that down just a little bit. It's a little that might be like two or three degrees too hot. And the way I tell is I've been doing it for a long time. I just feel the pot. At home, you can develop your own methodology. So pour that in there. But then I take the water, and I pour the water over the pot. That seals it. Now, ideally, when that's evaporated, the tea is ready. I watch it because sometimes that's not the case. This is a little teacup from, um, it's called Imari where It's from Japan. It's probably in the 18th century. It's a, it's a very lovely cup. And I, I'm showing you that because part of the joy of what I'm doing here, part of my ritual, is using beautiful objects to prepare the tea. That's why the tea ball isn't quite in that same category, unless maybe I was making the tea in a... Campbell soup can or something like that if I wanted to be funky. So I, I prefer the older methods of this. This is probably ready now. You want to taste this one too? All right. So this is a good green tea. Looks like it might be steeped a wee bit too much. Let Bryant tell us. So it is, you just add a little more water. So that's Kung Fu style. It's like Kung Fu, but it's Kung Fu. I think it's the other way around, whatever it is. It's the other one. Okay, so we've done two different ones. We used a glass teapot. Lots of room in this. These come in two different sizes. Uh, this is the larger of the two, I believe. And then there's a smaller one. So this is good if you want to do two couple people, and the other one's best for for just one person. Okay, how's that taste? Excellent. Is it good? Okay, Excellent. good. All right, now we're going to go to an oolong, the Iron Goddess. The Iron Goddess has an interesting story behind her. I'm going to boil this again so I can recalculate and uh, get that right. The Iron Goddess is a Tiquan Yin from China. It is ball rolled. They torture this poor thing within an inch of its life in order to uh, get it to give up its inner essence. Um, so they ball roll it in a big bag. They wet it, they roll it, it bleeds. Uh, sometimes it turns kind of a purple color on the edges. And it's, a, it's like little uh, balls. It's, it's tight. It's a tight tea. It's an oolong. And this the vessel I'm using right now is called a a Gai Wan. It's again, it's a Chinese uh, way of doing it. Now, again, with oolongs, you shouldn't use boiling. I just give it a boiling hit, and then I'm going to open my pot here like that. The reason I give it a boiling hit is the oolong is so tight, and it's sleeping. It wants to wake up. So once again, let's use the metaphor as if it were a person. It's a person that's kind of uh, just waking awakened from a nap. And they kind of are spaced out, and they're not really available yet. The scent of this particular one, 
Mm, it's quite delicious. It's almost toasty. Probably was finished over a wok. And uh, also there's, a, there's some sense of wild flowers in there, I guess I would say. So now I'm going to actually, I think this is cool enough for the oolong now, especially the ball rolled. There is another kind of an oolong that has a, it's called a dragon leaf. It's a long leaf and it's much more available than these. Someone's sweeping out in front of our place. Should give them a thank you. Getting all those cigarette butts. So um, I'm going to let that go a minute. Let's see what cup do I want to put this in. You know, well, that's sweeping. I'll show you some cups. These cups are made by a local artist. If you're in a, an area where you have you know, crafty people, it's wonderful to buy the cups from them. This guy actually collected this clay in these cups. From the Sierra Madre, uh, they did a lot of damage when they did the gold mining. So there's big piles of this stuff. It has a little bit of uh, uh, kind of a mineral type thing in it here, feldspar, I think, that uh, stays after it's fired. These are anagama. They were made in a kiln uh, with wood. So they're wood fired in the old fashioned method. So I got those from my friend Adam Field, who is a pretty famous potter if you want to look him up. He makes vessels, big vessels too, Adam Field. This is by Shiki Morioka. It's from Japan. It's Anagama again. It's about 30 years old. He uh, was a mentor of mine. It's very nice in the hand. It's one of my treasures. I love this. So you can find these cups. We have them here in the shop. This is by another local potter. Uh, actually, he's uh, from a village that's about an hour away, Copagosa Springs. Uh, D. Michael Coffey. And this is also one of his. He gave me this as a gift, and I highly prize this. It's got his mark on it. It's a wonderful color. So I think maybe we're going to use this one for Brian's next installment. And the guy I want you to push the stuff back. This leaf has opened up a lot. The scent is pretty strong. And then you just pour it out. All this, um, do it so that it's not clear to the top. If you do it to the top, the person that picks it up will burn their fingers. So you only do that for people you don't like. People you like, you give them that. So that's an oolong. Tikwani, and the story behind this is that there was a peasant who would go by this rundown temple every day in China. And he started to take care of it. He pulled the weeds, he watered the path to wash off the dirt. Uh, and one night, Tikwan Kuan Yin appeared to him, the Iron Goddess, and said to him, I've left a gift for you behind the shrine because you've been so uh, attentive to taking care of my shrine and honoring me. And he found the plant from which Ti Kuan Yin, it's a Camellia sinensis, Ti Kuan Yin comes. So that's a wonderful story, I think, about devotion. Uh, I've got a couple more to go here. I'll show you some more styles of brewing. Um, then we're going to do the thunderclap next. That's the black. So we did a, a white, a green, a oolong, and now we're going to do the black. And I want to show you how the Cresson works. Uh, you've all seen these and seen them used for coffee. They work great for tea. They also work great if, uh, if your tea is more of an herbal preparation, a tisane rather than a tea. They keep all the little particles from getting in your cup. Thundercloud, this is from Nepal. They're, they're Johnny come lately, sort of, with the tea industry, the tea world, uh, and they really have come on fast. I don't know who helped them to learn, but they're making some great teas. They still have a lot of competition, but they're, they're doing a good job. Uh, that's a black, so I'm going to boil that. The blacks will take boiling water. You just don't want to leave them too long because they will get nasty. Get a little bit of an edge to them, which isn't much uh, fun to drink or too uh, well, that's getting warm. This is another alternative to the tea ball. It's like a bigger version of this. These are really nice, again, too, if you're traveling. Uh, I don't recommend, for, recommend them for daily use at the house, um, usually, unless you're a student and on a tight budget. So that's a good one. That's a, like a brewing sieve. Um, you saw the tea balls. This is the Presson. These are priced at, I think, 21 bucks for the little one and 26 or 28 for the, yeah, 21 for the little one, like I'm using. The water must have boiled. And then these are some of the cups that we favor. These are from Bodum. They uh, have rubber on them, so they're really easy on the hand. Hold that. Okay, so we're going to do our black. Now we've got our black in the pots. The boil, we're at 190. 8197. I'm doing small quantities because I'm using little cups. You can use bigger cups, certainly. You can use the glasses like this. You can use you know cups of your 
Viking and these are little Japanese sencha cups. So they'll probably use uh, probably use this when I make the sencha. Sometimes we serve in a bit smaller cup if we're serving two people out of one pot. So this is the black. Traditionally, I would put the black in a See the color? It's a nice color there. So try and try that until you like that bow. Go. Okay, so we've done three four methods now. We've done the white pot. We've done the Kung Fu Zing. We've done the Gaiwan, all Chinese style. And then we did a black and a press zone. This is kind of modern. It's kind of a fun way to do it. Um, now we're going to go to Japan. So this is a, a Kyushu style pot. Kyushu is an island, one of the southernmost islands in Japan. It's made out of a clay. It is finished on the inside, but it isn't raw like the Ising. And it has a screen. I don't know if you can see that, but it has a screen there because the tea that we'll be using for this is a sencha, and they're a chopped tea. Uh, the reason that they uh, persist, too, is that uh, the way that they're finished, they're finished with steam instead of uh, heat. So it preserves uh, the quality, even though the leaf has been uh, manipulated some. Okay, so we're going to do Tomo. Tomo is our house sencha, seven fifty for two ounces. They go all the way up to twenty dollars an ounce for the really uh, fine teas from Uji. Uh, again, I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to put it in about a. I'm going to put in a four-finger pinch and then a three-finger pinch. Does anybody use my fingers? Your pinch is in proportion to your taste buds, so your pinch is the right size for you, if that makes sense. Now, the sencha, we made in that cup. And again, it's, this is about one, probably it's about 190 now. So I want to drop that down about 10 degrees. This comes up really fast on the first steep. I, use it. I tend to use a little more tea than other people. I use probably too much, so I have to take it off fast. But... If you want to do it, this would be good for seven or eight steeps. So here we go. This is one of Bryant, my behind the scenes man, favorite teas. He likes his sencha in the morning to wake up. Uh, Maybell, his dog, likes sencha too. We'll put it in her water bowl. All right, so that's ready. I don't know if you can see the color, but it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful uh, color. It reminds you of. Uh, the sea, uh, you know, marine vegetation, like you get in the sushi bar, the seaweed, or it reminds you of um, grass or something really vegetable fresh. So that's essential. Now, I could do another six or seven steeps out of there. And I showed you those cups. I'm in front of uh, our tea array here in the tea shop. We have over 100 teas. I'm sure, I think about 78 on the shelf behind me. And uh, I showed you the cups. So these are the packaged goods. This is the this is the presson. This is the teapot, and this is the size below what I used. You saw the tea balls. So if you can avoid the tea ball um, and brew loose leaf tea, you can participate in the ritual, which includes um, you know just setting it up. Like this is a, a piece of wood I use. It was my it was my wife's uh, father's. Um, it would be traditionally used in Japan either for tea or for the display of kibana. It's just a slice from a knot of a tree. But that's probably 150 years old because he collected it when he was a young man. He'd be about 110 now. So, But the more you do um, a personalized selection of your equipment, the more that you can create being in the moment with the tea and being transported not only by ingesting the tea but by the process of preparing it. Remember, it's just adding hot water to leaves uh, in various degrees. This I got at a outlet store of some sort. I can't get it right now, but this is bamboo. This is a bamboo cutting board. So it doesn't have to be expensive or fancy. It's got two sides. It's got a plain side, and this is if you're carving something or doing something that's going to drip. So we use this in the tea room when we're making a bowl of matcha for someone. Should we do matcha? Um, yeah, I mean, we could show them how to brew it. Yeah, I think I'll do it and drink it. <laughs> yeah, all right. I hope I got a little bit. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see.
Okay, back again. Matcha is uh, the tea that's used in the tea. It's uh, the way of tea in Japan is what we call it, actually. And uh, this bowl I'm using is by Shige Morioka. He's a very famous Japanese potter. I showed you a smell bowl from him. I stayed with him when I, I lived in Japan as a monk. I stayed with him for a while and his wife, a short period of time. Anyway, uh, this is a great bowl. I love this bowl a lot. And there's usually a front and a back to a bowl. This is a really lovely place to drink from the bowl. Either end here. See, it was, when it was picked up wet, it was squeezed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to declare that that's the front of the bowl. To move that one. Mm -hmm. This is, again, Anagama, natural glaze. The, uh, this is an example of what the kiln has to say. It, it did that. They actually have a word in Japanese that says what the kiln had to say, or the mind of the kiln. I can't remember what it is. But. Anyway, so this is the tea. It's a powdered green tea. I'm using the sieve because sometimes this has a few bumps in it, and it does better if you uh, grind those out. This would probably be done behind the scenes if I were in Japan, so that I would put the... Uh, I put the tea in a coaster like this. That was inelegant. This is gold leafed tea caddy. So I would do this in the back room, put it in here, and then I would dump it in there for the ceremony. So there's all kind of stuff like this that you can get for, the, for tea if you're into stuff. It's really fun. Okay, this takes it about, let's see, it probably. 170 maybe, that's about right. I sometimes cool this when I, uh, the high priest took me to a temple in Japan to a friend of his and we were having tea. And this particular temple was really busy on the weekend. So during the week they turned the waterfall off because it cost them electricity. <laughs> and they would turn the waterfall on like on Saturday morning when all the tourists are coming and all the parishioners. So they would get better donations if there was a waterfall. So anyway, he pulled out a silver, this is a plate, but he pulled out a silver pot, poured the boiling water into it. The Japanese say the water is ready for this particular kind of tea when the boiling, or whatever it's doing, sounds like wind in the uh, pine needles. I didn't, I'm not that level yet, but anyway, it's a good idea, I think, to determine it. So I'm just adding water. It's really beautiful. The potter thinks about how's that going to look against the bottom of his bowl when he's making it. This is a pretty open form. This is almost a summer bowl, but a little bit bigger, less more heat out, but it's a good transitional bowl. I, I like using it even in the winter. So you just add the... You don't get this one, Brian. I'm going to break this one. You just add your water. And then uh, this is a whisk. It's made from a single piece of bamboo. It's a black bamboo. Sometimes they are tricky, though, and it looks like a black bamboo, but it's actually bamboo that's taken from the kitchens a lot of times have bamboo ceilings and after the years and years of smoke it turns that color. I think this is black bamboo but you can also get one that's smoked which is kind of fun. Now what I'm doing right now is suspending the green tea leaf. It's the whole leaf. And this is from Uji. It's a Gikuro. It was covered up by mats so that it matured slowly in its last days. Uh, it's got a nice crema on it. And so there's a bowl of tea. Now I'm going to turn it as though you were going to drink the tea. And now the front is toward me. And I can see the beauty of it as you drink the tea. But I'm going to drink this tea, so I'm going to turn it again. Okay. So this is what would be used in the way of tea ceremony, chado. Oh, that's very, you got to taste it. It's really good. That's really good. Wow. I haven't had a bowl of matcha for about a week. So. These are some, isn't that good? <laughs> I wish you could see Brian's face. <laughs> He's in heaven here. Yeah, this is great tea. A lot of my uh, bikers, kayakers, and, and uh, rock climbers use this tea in their bottles because it gives you a really good blast of energy, but it does drop you off like caffeine and coffee. I don't have anything against coffee. Don't quote me. There you go, Brian. Any questions? Good. All right, good. So uh, if there are no questions, <laughs> uh, that's it for this morning. Thanks for joining us. 
Uh, well, maybe this afternoon or late night if you can't sleep, because uh, I guess this is going to be available on Facebook and YouTube and. Yeah. Okay.